Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming at you with another video. All right. You know what I wish? I wish Ben Simmons played for the Jazz or the Pacers or something like that. Because as I listened to Skip and Shannon talk about him not shooting the ball and just, you know, breaking down his concerns about shooting, um, I just realized that, well, I can't say realize because I've been preaching this the whole time, but it, it, it just, it's one of those things where it's like when you put a pressure rise situation, you know, together, and then you put guys who don't handle pressure very well in place to execute your plan, uh, you're going to have a disaster. You're going to have a disaster. Um, and you couple that with the physical nature of what it is he's been dealing with with his back, it's all wrong. It's all wrong. Um, you know, he should be in a situation where there are no win now expectations for at least another two or three years, maybe even longer. He should be a role player from here on out, not expected to be a superstar or all star or anything like that. <clears throat> and he should not be asked to do uh, some of the things that his defensive uh, profile would otherwise ask him um, to do. Right? You know, normal assignments that he would normally take if he were Philadelphia's Ben Simmons, he should not be doing right now. Uh, his body can't necessarily take it. The game has changed a lot since he left. Um, and that is a very important part of what it is that I tell you guys in this camera all the time in assessing the NBA. It's changed a lot over the last two, three years. Um, his assignments are going to be much more difficult than they were back then. You're not just dealing with a couple of wings. You're dealing with uh, two or three a night. You know, guys who are going to be throwing at you like Brandon Clark and uh, you know, all these dudes, Isaiah Stewart, just randomly everybody, Keegan Murray. You could think of just a million different players. Jeremy Grant. <clears throat> Every night, it's a new one. Jason Tatum. All of these guys that are like 6'10", with long arms, who are strong, talented, shifty, and are going to be able to get to the highest point. You know, a lot of times for rebounds and tips and things of that nature. It's so real out here as it pertains to size. If you watch the Orlando Magic and the Cleveland Cavaliers highlights of the game last night, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is not Steph Curry's three-point shooting league. This ain't this ain't that. You can't get away with being short in this league right now, man. <clears throat> you cannot. And that's what it is that I'm starting to understand. Ben Simmons is not a short person, but the people around him are. And because of it, he has to be responsible for guarding the Giannis's. You see what Giannis did to him last night? Giannis is going to do that to him every time. Giannis would do that to Philadelphia Ben Simmons when he was at his best. He definitely going to do that to this version of Ben. That's not. Just like Anthony Davis, Ben Simmons is being asked to do things that are unreasonable for what it is he should be expected to do physically. <clears throat> ben Simmons has been dealing with a back injury. The last thing he needs to be is the defensive anchor in the paint. You know, I've seen them get on his case for the fouls uh, that he's been accredited for. That's his job. <laughs> that is his job, ladies and gentlemen. He is the enforcer on the team. He's Draymond for their team. Whether, you are, whether we've caught up to that or not, that's his job. He needs to be able to set hard fouls, set hard screens, and make people feel the Brooklyn Nets. Why? Because if he doesn't, who is? Claxton and Sharp? Those are young guys, man. You know what I'm saying? They're not, they don't have that type of cachet. It's going to be KD. KD ain't no bruiser like that. It's going to be Kyrie. Come on, man. It has to be him. So getting on him for picking up fouls is like getting on Dre for picking up fouls from here on out. Let's just, it's not about that being something everybody should have already known. It's about that's what is there for him to be for their team. You see what I'm saying? That wasn't the necessarily the role for him in Philly, but yeah, look, look around. He has to be the enforcer there. He's the defensive anchor. He's the enforcer. He's the guy checking the big guys. And so what do those guys normally do? They lay the wood, elbow, knees. You're going to feel them. <laughs> So that's Ben's job. And if that's Ben's job, then you know damn well you shouldn't be having him do that. Because it's, you know, where he's been mentally, where he's been 
with his confidence. Not I need a job for a guy like that. But because of what they need physically, he has to do it. And of course, physically, we're talking about that wearing him down. And thus hurting his back and putting him in a position to be leaning on guys like Claxon and Sharp any damn way for that stuff. Which is why I say they need to go ahead and get some size. The best thing they can do for themselves is acquire a guy like Jonas Valanciunas. I kid you not. A Jonas Valanciunas acquisition for the Brooklyn Nets would be like manna from heaven. Because he's exactly what they need. Someone who can get easy buckets. Someone they can just dump the ball to. Someone who can hit the three and rebound a bunch of rebounds. And just be healthy all season long. He would literally be the best acquisition in my mind for the Brooklyn Nets. Even though it's an awkward kind of dynamic he is indeed what would help them. Just a real strong, heavy dude in the paint that can just be a bruiser and just kick people around. Take away from the spacing issue that Ben Simmons creates. Because what you end up having is Ben, of course, being reluctant to shoot the ball, creating these problems. So now you need Claxton and Sharp and the guys who are going to be on the floor with him to be able to shoot. And so from what I understand, they're having some shooting issues as well. So it's like, I look at the Brooklyn Nets. And I just say all of this is foreseeable. We talk about it a lot. I've been talking about it all summer. I encourage everybody to go back and look at all of those videos I made throughout the summer. Because I've illustrated all of this. All of this was very easy for me to see, man. They didn't have the talent. They didn't have it. It wasn't there. They needed people who hadn't been proven to step up and step out and do it in a big way. Uh, in order for them to do it. Do anything this season. And, you know, the players that they were leaning on to be real role players that they said were going to just blow your socks off are players who hadn't played in years. And I'm not exaggerating. T.J. Warren was somebody they wanted us to be excited about. Have you seen T.J. Warren this season? No, and you probably won't see T.J. Warren this season if history tells us anything. You know, T Seth Curry. We love Seth Curry, but he ain't played a single game this season. They really need him, and they need him to play at a high level for them to have any shot at being competitive. Joe Harris. I've been hearing Joe Harris was somebody they were excited about keeping. They didn't want to let go of Joe Harris because they believed in him. I don't know what kind of misevaluation of talent that is, but that's somebody who hasn't played in two years. He's going to be a cone out there. If his shot ain't falling, for which he's had his issues with at times, being a shooter that's had some real shooting issues, uh, you, needed to, you need to trade him. Like you need, you need to see the fruit in getting that contract off of your books because it is a contract sore to your cap and it's, it's eating away at, at what you can do to bring talent to your team but like these are the type of things that you just have to understand as a GM have to be taken care of as soon as possible and so it's just like you know I, I've been watching Sean Marks I understand he's been under a lot of stress obviously with KD bringing up this trade request midway through the season it probably deterred a lot of other phone calls he could have been making to improve the team fielding phone calls to try to get him traded and ultimately coming up with nothing I'm sure I'm certain that deterred what it is he wanted to do for the squad. And I'm sure KD knows that too. Yeah, it's some of your fault. But nevertheless, it's like, okay, here we are. The team don't have what it needs. And you're asking guys to do things that they shouldn't be asked to do. And the media is going to say that they're the greatest thing since sliced bread. But the reality is <laughs> they're going to be proven wrong and we're going to see it manifest. And exactly that is happening. That's, that's what I told you. That is what I said what happened about four months ago. Um, and we're seeing it happen, man. And the players, you know, the, the, all the stars are playing great. Kyrie, Katie, they're putting up their numbers, assists, points. They look like all stars, but it don't matter because it's not about whether or not stars can lead you to a championship. That is a fallacy in this league. It has been a fallacy for many years. Yes, did Michael Jordan and, and guys of that era uh, get away with having guys that weren't very versatile on the floor and you know, all you need is a couple really good pieces, and that's it. You can win a championship if your greatest guy is, is the best player on the floor. Yes, that was what it was. And a lot of people who talk <laughs> into the camera about the NBA still believe that's what it is, but it ain't. It is not. It is not. And it's being proven in real time. You are seeing it right there in Brooklyn, right here in L.A. with the Lakers. You can have a superstar. He can play like a superstar, and it ain't going to make a difference if the talent around him ain't good. <laughs> period and most importantly and more specifically ain't big enough to match up with these super big teams that are being put out there which is what the field is made up of right now so it's like look it don't matter if you got these Katie's and Kyrie's it don't matter 
because if you if they don't have guys that can match up with those kind of guys, they're going to lose. They're going to do all they can do, and it ain't going to be any, as uh, as many points as the other team scores. You know, basketball you have a score of one hundred and thirty to ninety nine. So KD goes for fifty, and Kyrie goes for forty. It's only ninety points, buddy. You still lost. <laughs> you lost by a lot, and that's exactly what's going on there. <laughs> so, yeah, that is that is the end of the situation. Ben Simmons is going to have to. Um, in my humble opinion, make a business decision. And I know this is going to sound absolutely nuts, but I think he needs to make a business decision to retreat away from basketball and further work on his mental health and his physical conditioning. Because if he, if he does not do that, I got a feeling he's going to, he's going to, he's going to ruin his career because he ain't ready. He ain't ready. If he was ready, we wouldn't even have nothing to talk about in regards to him being afraid to shoot. He's not ready. And I told everybody that I didn't believe he was ready. It's too soon. It's literally too soon, man. He he just went through what he went through only less than a year ago. His issues are much deeper than a year's worth of, tr- of, of, of work, to be completely honest with you. That's just the reality of it. it. He needed to do more than a year's worth of work. It's going to be a lifelong process of him overcoming whatever it is that he has to deal with. But to think that it's like, okay, his mental health, he took some time. Now he's good. It's like people who don't have mental health concerns will rationalize it that way. People who understand it like myself know better. That's not how this works. That's not that's not even how the brain heals. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes certain situations, just like the triggers that triggered you into whatever your trauma is, you're gonna need some things that are gonna trigger you out of it as well. And so it's like you're not gonna find those moments. In these pressure situations, when he's in Brooklyn trying to win a championship with not enough, yeah, you're not going to snap out of your your circumstance mentally uh, applying that type of pressure to a guy who's only had less than a year's worth of work on what he's dealing with. Come on, man. Let's let's, let's act informed here in regards to what, what it takes to get healed up when you're mentally uh, struggling, and especially as it pertains to certain things like doing what it takes to do within the the game that you've excelled in all your life. You know, things that that... that, that you're good at that you're afraid to do within that arena. That's very, very serious. You know what I'm saying? You got to, and, and I'm speaking out of turn, but it's like you got to be beat into that, in my opinion. You got to be beat into being afraid to fail. That's all, that's years and years of, of your mind being messed with, if I'm being real. So that's how I take it, man. I think Ben Simmons has been through something like that. And he's going to have to undo it, and it ain't going to be, uh, in the environment where the Brooklyn media is telling him to hurry up. You know, it, it, the face of the superstars that he's got next to him are, like, always being watched. And it's on him to be the old him and be humble and all these other different things that he still has to work on. That he still has to get right within himself. And he's not even 30 years old. So he's still in his 20s trying to deal with all this. He needs to be in Utah, Indiana. Melbourne, somewhere, you know what I'm saying? Like at home in Australia, he need to be somewhere else. Not in the place where everything is like, yeah, and you need to be like, win now. You know what I'm saying? That that type of pressure crack a lot of people's minds, especially those who are already dealing with it. So, I just think that's a terrible environment for him right now. I really do. I think it's terrible. I think it's the right situation because of the pieces could fit if they get other stuff like Katie and Kyrie. That's a good fit for Ben. If you had the other stuff, but no, nah, that's not that's not what they have. So I understand it's the business. I understand a lot of people don't understand what to do with people in mental health circumstances. A lot of people have their own mental health circumstances that they haven't dealt with. So they act here act in a certain way in response to things that they're seeing. And so it's a lot of stuff like that that's, that that could be possible. Uh, but if people are thinking about what's best for Ben, then they're gonna kind of isolate him away from these stresses in my opinion and it's peanut gallery and is he shooting are you shoot did you shoot a three today that's not that's not the environment for a guy like this uh, at all and so i feel like if he goes back and does the work finds himself in a sacramento type situation where he can just fall back into the shadows and continue to work on his himself i think eventually he'll shoot the threes he'll let the shots fly they'll come to him he'll he'll work through what it is that that makes him afraid of being uh, a Laker-like shooter, you know what I mean? He's afraid to brick like we're actually bricking. <laughs> it's funny that they, that that's like his phobia to to literally be 
what the Lakers are right now. <laughs> He's afraid to shoot. And then all it is is the ball bricks. Then it bricks off the rim and you <laughs> grab the rebound and keep it going, man. I mean, it's just basketball, but in his mind, it's, it's something else. And so um, asking him to do it or the media pressuring him to do it is just like you're just further putting on the worst of it. You know what I mean? That's all it is. When your mind's telling you it's, it's a problem, it's, it is a problem. Whether it's real or not, it's really you. So I get that in a different kind of way, you know, and it's kind of like because I get it, it's like, well, Ben's going to need some more time. And, and the way that you guys are assessing what his healing process should be is completely off, way, way off. And that ain't how this works. Um, so that's what I want to say in regards to Ben Simmons. I'm hopeful that he can find a very – less pressurized basketball situation he can excel in and a coach that uniquely understands his style and can allow him to be himself because um as i was saying in regards to my team basketball is a very unique sport and i think we're in an era where the people who teach it play it and watch it believe that the way that it is being played is the way to play and what I'm telling you is that's not actually the case. It's the way we play right now as the rules are constructed today. I've seen things change. I've known of things to change in this game that would immediately almost change the entire game itself if rerouted back to the way it was. Three-point line, hand-checking, things of that nature. The game has a million ways to play. You just got to be open-minded enough to go against the grain as the rest of the field has agreed to play a certain way and do it within the rules so you don't get infractions. I believe you can play the way Russ, uh, Ben Simmons wants to play. I think people have been taught against that based on certain scenarios that they've seen as they've seen that style being played. In other words, you can't dribble into the paint, have a layup opportunity, and dump the ball off to another guy who's dunking the ball because that's, that's an extra pass unnecessary. That's not how you play. But the reality is if he does it the right way, it's going to look great, it's going to execute great, and it's going to be opportunities you can be able to take advantage of that some weird scenario way. Now, maybe he should limit that or not do it as often or what have you, but the point is, it's not the wrong way to play. You can make it so that he has to make an extra pass if you change the rules, and then everybody has to learn how to play that way. You can't just get a layup underneath the paint. you got to get the ball passed to a person before you do. Like, that's a rule that can just be in place, just change the entire game you're playing. Still basketball. And it's an agreement. Ten years from now, that could be the only way to play. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, with that being the case, I know that basketball is a fluid sport confined by the rules itself you can spread the lines out if they want to stretch out the lines if they really want to strength the court as they've done at times make the free throw line closer raise the basket higher to 10 feet they can do all kinds of stuff they're not even thinking to do and what i'm telling you is possible it's literally possible you can do it all kinds of ways so nah you just got to open your mind to be able to go against the grain and as it pertains to Ben Simmons, he needs a coach that thinks like that and knows how to take advantage of his strengths. And then he needs luck to be on his side so he can get in the type of shape necessary to be his best self. If he gets all of that in place, you put the right shooters around him, I think Ben Simmons could lead the league in assists for many, many years. For many, many years. But it's so much stuff that has to come together and it has to be centered around him. And I'm afraid that's just not real in a league like this. That's just not real. You can't. The, the odds of him being able to find all of that is like winning the lottery. You know, you got to be interchangeable. You got to be shooting. You got to be tall, long, lengthy. All You got to be able to do all kinds of things so that you can be interchangeable in a league that has so many different systems that, confined, that are confined within what it is I'm talking about. So it's like, as the, as the game grows, you will see exactly what it is I'm describing. So many different changes that are probably ahead. And they're going to have to adjust because guys are going to come into the league being able to dominate what it is that's in front of us. Just like Shaq came in and blew up the league. Steph came in and blew up the league. They have to change the rules to fit the talent that's coming. That's going to be the case as well. Web Banyama, I'm pretty sure they're going to have to change some rules to fit what it is they're going to be dealing with when it comes to that kid. If he develops the way I think he could and as durable as I think he is, he's, he's going to have to, they're going to have to fix the league to, to, to compete with him. You see what I'm talking about? I really believe that. <laughs> So these are the type of things I look at and I say, Ben Simmons, be yourself, but understand that while you're confined within the rules of this game, you need to overcome that phobia that tells you you can't shoot the ball. Whoever put it in your mind that you need to overpass, they deterred the amount of money you're able to make in this league. <laughs> they were teaching you some bullshit. You need to be able to shoot the ball, and you got to be able to do it um, enough in this league. So overcome that, man. Pull that tooth out. 
pull that tooth out. Because that's what it is. You got to pull a teeth when you're overcoming your mind. But you got to pull that out. Or it's going to it's gonna affect um, what he's able to do going forward in his career. He'll regret it. Because you only get to play the ball, the, the league, for a short amount of time. And you have the rest of your life to, to, to think about how it went. So, in my mind, he needs to be trying to do everything he can to stay in the league. A guy like Russell Westbrook, same thing. But, you know, Russell has his own way of doing things. So, he can't be reasoned with. I don't think Ben is like that. I think Ben is young enough to learn a lot of new things. I think Ben is long enough. He's young enough to heal up and still prolong his career, but he needs to get out of environments where people are telling him to do it now for them. F them. Do it for you. So that's what I got to say, man. That's what I got to say. BDL44. Thank you all for watching.